You, you want to go fast? Go alone. You want to go far? Go together. 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 And you're going to get knocked down, and the market's going to turn on you, and things aren't going to go the way, but you, this is what you got to do. You got to get up. Um, let's just jump in with the conversations that I was talking about earlier. So before we went live, I was telling him that what was so really heavy on my heart is the conversations that I'm having of people are like, what are you doing about anxiety? Like, Nicole, we're trying to talk about business. And they're like, so Nicole, I have a question. What are you doing about handling anxiety? Like getting up every morning and getting out of bed. And as, as, as you know, crazy as that sounds, that's really the hardest part right now is your mindset. And we are quarantined, we're stuck at home. There's so much going on, there's so much noise and chaos. And how are you still able to be highly productive, a leader in your business and in your industry while all the chaos is going on? And so for me, it's, it's sticking to my routine. And I wanna to talk to you, Satema, on like, what does your day look like now? Um, obviously we've had to adjust our businesses, our, you know, the way we do everything right now because we don't have a choice. And I think that it would be super beneficial for the people that are watching to just really understand like where your head's at because you are still performing on a high level. You're still running a, a, a very successful business and you have an incredible group um, that you are actively in and, you know, leading. So I know that takes a lot of clarity and I take, and that takes a lot of um, really with your mindset. So love to hear you. Yeah. Well, look, first of all, let me just say thank you for letting me be on here. I, I'm, I am honored to be here and just uh, appreciate the opportunity to be with you who, again, you're a, not only a client, but you're a mentor as well, right? Like you're someone I learned from and a colleague. So I, I love what you're doing with the short selling in your organization. Look, the, the first thing, like most important thing that someone can do right now, like the most important thing, you need to get clear about how you want to go through this. Principle four of the 13 principles is clarity is power. So I know for certain, I, I forecast and I tell people, stop looking to the past unless you're looking back to remember to celebrate and remember things that work well. I'd say, look, go into the future and say, okay, when this is done, who do I want to be? What do I want to have accomplished? How do I want to feel? And if I get clear about that picture, Stephen Covey says, begin with the end in mind. I know we're all going to arrive at the destination six or 12 months, 18 months from now. We're going to get there. Where you land is up to you and the decisions you make today. So that's the first thing I'd say is just get clear and make some declarations. I know when I'm done with this, I want to feel happier. I want to have greater flow in my business. I want to have my gratitude just so expanded and deepened. And I want to feel happy. Like I don't want to put on a happy face. <laughs> I want to be happy. So that if, if the listeners can get that, that's the most important thing. Because then what I'm going to share with you now will make a difference. So you asked, hey, what's my routine? I've adjusted it. And instead of just going to the gym at like five by myself, I shifted it to about 6.30 with my sons. Every morning I walk in there and I don't force them. I just say, do you want to, want to walk with daddy? And of course, they, they hop up out of bed because I've been prepping them. All right, I've been preparing them i'm with my sons nicole and i'm so i'm getting my family time in we, we did a two and a half mile run today two younger ones beating our times we're measuring i'm we're doing conscious self-creation like the i am i am i am the whole i'm teaching we're training we're walking and talking what are you learning we did pull-ups we did our whole workout before i do that when i first get up water my conscious self-creation is, is like an affirmation is on my mirror supplements, 10 deep breaths. I like move my body, get my shoulders. I just take time in front of the mirror to look at myself and I decide this is how my day is going to be. Yep. I, I decide. I go about and do my work. Right? I got, in fact, I have my, this is my, like you can't quite see because it's whitewashed, but I've got my high value targets. I've already knocked out the uh, we not knocked out three of the five for the week. I've got a bunch of things on my hit That's list. Right there. I there you go. I see it. There you go. About every 50 minutes in the day, mm -hmm. I take a break. So 50, why 50 minutes? Because that's about as much as like science has shown 
you can really focus in if you're at your computer, you're working. Yeah. And so 50 minutes in, I set a timer on my, my phone. I get up, I walk, I do pull-ups, I get a drink, I go outside, I go hit the piano. I just I need a 10-minute break just to reset, recalibrate. And then I have time constraints. When I come sit back down, the question I ask is what's the most important thing I've got to do in the next 50 minutes? I wrap all that, finish my day out, and then we have a you know family time, we'll go out and throw the football, and then I have an evening routine. And I follow the three, two, one, three hours before bed, no food. You know, so I'm like, I, I know if I'm eating at six o'clock, I'm not gonna eat again or like seven, two hours before bedtime. I'm not going to work. Work is done. Yeah. One hour before bed, no screens, no phones, no computers, no TV, just like all that stuff off. And then, you know, I, um, hygiene, supplements, water, shower, just like good routine. Because what finishes strong, starts strong. People say, how do you get up so early? I'm like, you go to bed early. Mm -hmm. And I have my journal right here, which is open. And I, again, I, I'm, I'm just, I keep everything in my journal. I grade my day, answer my questions, look at my high value targets for the next day. And then I'm with my wife and like, I just know for certain, if you're gonna perform at high levels, even right now, yeah. a lot of people have thrown away their routines and they just, they're eating tubs of ice cream and they're binging and like, no, ain't nothing wrong with ice cream. I love ice cream. Ain't nothing wrong with Netflix or Disney Plus. I love Hulu and we have shows that we watch as a family. Right but the small and simple things that prime the day, right? Primes my mind, primes my heart. And then the way I finish my day, it just puts me on this, this, this higher level of winning and happiness and success. Well, and I think the key of what people, when people are watching this that they need to see is like your structure, right? Because when, even when I was talking to someone earlier today, um, she felt all over the place because she has no uh, structure or discipline or really a plan right and you just broke down like your morning your afternoon and that's how detailed and and so you're able to focus on the things that you can control instead of being frustrated all over the place because you can't control like the things that are else you know all the outside noise and everything that's going on and i think that's really the key right now because there's so much going on right now i mean it's not even just with trying to survive your business it's not even just with your relationships it's survival right like there's so many people that are unemployed there's so many people that are just in distress because of the unknown and what you talk about a lot is you know planning and you talk about um like you just said um being making sure that um you know with no phone time no like there's a reason why you're not on your phone in the mornings first thing in the mornings or that you're going to bed with them because that creates that chaos and i know for me like just being a part of the circle of champions and being a part of, of just changing my perspective of the discipline in my personal life how much that's changed my business and so that anxiety went away I mean, not completely because I'm a human being, but um, the anxiety went away drastically because I was able to focus on the discipline for me in my personal life. And it translated for me as a leader, as you know, for my company and everything. And, and I, that's what I love about what you guys do within your group. And look, can you talk about a little bit about the Circle of Champions for yeah. people that aren't familiar with it? So you see here, Titan is our, our men's program for immersion. Nicole, yeah. you came through Shield Maiden. You crushed it, by the way. You were a leader in your group, which is the women's program. Okay. After immersion, right, you go through this four-day, you know, a few weeks of online training and coaching, and then you come through a four-day immersion program, six in the morning till about seven at night. And there's a lot of transformation and shifts that take place. Well, when that's done... I know there's a problem. People are like, okay, now what? What do I do? How do I continue to live this way? Okay. So we created, you know, a lot of people would call it a mastermind, yep. but that's our mastermind. Circle of Champions, right? You have three live events to come back to, to see other Circle of Champion members. Yep. We have right now two, two coaching calls a week where people can plug into a Monday, a Friday. We have a vault that's got about a hundred hours of content. And then I coach our people, whether it's funnels, marketing, relationships, fitness. We have a whole system of goalkeeping, goal, goal um, tracking, scoring, just moving your life forward. So I just love it, right? Because uh, I'm a Super Bowl champion who sold his Super Bowl ring. I will back one day and I just wanted to create a group where people could say, okay, I've got all this cool stuff. 
let me lock arms with other men and who have done the same so I can produce results. And Circle of Champions is about winning results, happiness in every part of life, physical, spiritual, relational, financial. And that, that to me, I feel like is so fundamental what you just said, because it's every area of your life. And for me, it was like, okay, you know, as entrepreneurs and a lot of the people that are watching are in real estate, because naturally, because I'm in real estate and they were so focused on sales. We're so focused on killing it. Right. Which there's nothing wrong. You have to roll up your sleeves. You have to grind. But if you're not successful in every area of your life, there's no way that you can perform on a high level. And what I love about just the group that we're a part of that you've created in the culture is that it's less bullshit and it's more, Hey, let's be real. Because if you're not real about what's going on, this is not the place to sugarcoat it. Like you say that all the time. You're like, don't give me this answer that is, you know, the, the popular answer or something that's going to make you look good. Let's be real so that we can actually work through these things. And a lot of times people don't see that and they appreciate the fact that you are so authentic and that you are, you do put it all out there and you're like, Hey, this is what's happening. And most importantly, this is how we take the steps to walk through it. I mean, you're a living testament to that because you live it every single day. And for me, that mind shift change was, was life changing. I mean, it really was because I've always been a high producer. I've always killed it in business, but I was failing in every other area of my life in my relationships and my personal life. I mean, 28 years old and I was on high blood pressure medicine because I was so stressed out. And to be able to go through something like experience, something like Shill Maiden was, you know, it changed my life. And I'm so grateful for that experience. But most importantly, understanding that those fundamentals is really what's helping get through things like this, like your mindset, right? Like, I mean, just last week, I think I even posted on Facebook, I felt so defeated and my heart was so heavy because everyone around me, just that stress of, you know, people are losing their jobs. They don't have money to pay their rent. How are you going to eat type of conversations? And I just woke up and I'm like, just do it anyway. And I like get out of bed and I'm so used to running in the mornings and I made myself run. And because I've been doing this routine for so long, it became second nature. And I was so grateful for it because even though I felt that way, we have to feel our emotions. It's okay to be stressed out. It's okay to be emotional. We just can't stay there. Right. And that's what we talk about. Like yeah. we can't stay in that state. Like it's normal. You're not weak for feeling that way, but you're, that's why your routine is so important. It's everything. It literally gets you through that. It gets you through those emotions. And I think that's something that is really powerful for people that are going through that because like you said, people are eating ice cream right now and um, the people that are just completely shut down um, because of everything that's happening, they need to hear that. Like you have to stick to your routine and your mindset's what's going to get you through and you're either going to thrive because of this and you know, be the best version of you or you're going to come out of it and not even recognize yourself because of the circumstances. So, you know, you talking about you said like routines are everything it is because routines are small and simple things that we control, right? Routines are the small and simple things that, oh, the sun has just come out over here. It is getting bright. Uh, <laughs> the routines are small and simple things that you can control. And the small things are not the big things. The small things are everything. And when you can master how you get up the first 10 day, Right, not having like I used to just look at my phone as soon as I got up and and I sat that one and I'm like I, I hate this I don't I don't like getting up and being addicted to my phone and I don't like going to bed looking at my phone I'm like what if I just left my phone downstairs so that what that one thing has shifted because now I read a book before I go to bed or, or I'm with my wife and we're having our time together yeah. and waking up I don't go look at my phone I don't even have my watch I don't even have an, I literally don't have an alarm that wakes me up I when I get up is when I get up and my body's getting up about between 5.30, 5.45 right now, which is great. It's giving me some, a little bit of extra sleep. But I'll say this, Nicole, you know, if, if people can really f go into the future, mm -hmm. one of two things is going to happen. You're going to either say, look at, what, look at how we evolved, and you will be telling a story in the future about this time. 
will yep. be telling the story to people of how you thrived, how you were more happy, how you adapted and adjusted to the virtual world of business, how you increased your marketing organic or paid or earned. You'll either do that, that one, let's hope it's that one, or the second one, you're gonna look back and say, man, I wish I would have. Yep. I wish I would have. And my message to people is always, let it be the first, like really decide how you want to start your day and how you want to get through this. Now, I've got a routine like you, it's dialed. Like it's real, I mean, I do a lot. My journal, my gratitude, my conscious of creation, uh, my supplements, my water, my breathing, I open up. All this before I look at electronics, my evening routine, like, and I can rattle it off. Wherever you're at, just start with something simple. Like, like that's the game. Simple, success, swinging singles. We're not trying to hit a home run. Right. Just get on first base. Just get on first base. Yeah, absolutely. Um, for someone that is, you know, right now in business and they're struggling with their company and their leadership, like I know you said the, your best advice is starting where you are. Um, what would you tell them uh, for somebody that's coming to you and saying, Satema, I'm struggling just to survive. Like, what, would, what advice would you give them? Yeah, great question. So I was here before. So when I'm what I'm about to share, I went through this in 2008. Like we got our butts kicked. We lost everything. I went out, I liquidated, I drained my bank accounts. So this time's different. So what if someone was like, hey, I'm struggling right now, I would just would sit down and say, okay, look, let's look at the facts, mm -hmm. the truth. And I just get get out a piece of paper and say, let's write down the facts and the truth. Because most people are dealing with what I call stories. They're, they're making things bigger than it really than they really are. So first step, like get the facts. What's the truth? What's and, and go through the whole thing. Okay, what, what, for example, if someone's like, man, I'm struggling. I'm like, what do you mean you're struggling? Well, I, I'm like, income is slowed down. Okay, keep going, and we get the facts. Income is slowed. What does that mean? Right. Maybe not be able to pay our people. Okay, what does that mean? And if you break all those down, what it really means is that, okay, so money has slowed down. Okay. Okay, that's the truth. Anything you add on top of that is meaning that creates stress. Now I get it, right? If you haven't already talked to your mortgage or your landlord, your lease, all the people you your 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 car loans, get on the phone with them and they already know. Yeah. All the auto most of the auto dealerships and finance companies, they're giving you one to two months to not make a car payment. If you've got a landlord or mortgage, get on there and figure out some type of forbearance or some type of partial payment, like everyone's going through this. So the worst thing you can do is just throw your hands up again and just feel sorry for yourself. Right. I would do that, like handle it so you can preserve cash. I would look to be, I would look to be leaner. Again, I'm like we're, it's amazing. We're eating, like we're cooking everything at home. Like we've never done this. We, we're eating out six, so eight, tired nine of cooking. <laughs> Well, it's like we're, my boys are actually, they're loving it because they're cooking now. I've showed them how to make everything. And they're like, there you cooking. go. There you go. But that's the first thing I'd say is yeah. detach the meaning from what's actually happening. Because I promise you, you're creating a, a bigger, more scary story around slowed income or no income. Now, I get it. Look, if you've got a roof over your head mm -hmm. and if you can put food on the table, and if you can wake up inside of a warm bed and you have running water, you're going to be okay. And I know we make up stories to be bigger. So that's the first thing I would say is detach any unnecessary meaning. And then again, start to build out a plan. If you have employees, I, I tell business owners this all the time. You, if you haven't made some deep cuts, and I know there's, there's, like, there's some camps out there that are like, I'll go broke before I fire my people. That's what's going to happen if you don't make some of these cuts. When I say cuts, there's best case scenario and worst case scenario. And I say, have a plan for both. Right. One of the worst things I did back in 08 is I was overly optimistic about like, I'm like, oh, we're gonna make it through this. We're gonna be fine. Right. I drained every penny that I had. And about, I don't know, 15 to 18 months later, I ended up firing, I, like we went out of business. Had I reserved my cash and, and just let people go collect unemployment and do that route, I probably would have made it through it and obviously not have the story that I have now. So best case scenario, this is done in 30 to 60 days. Have a plan for that. Worst case scenario, this goes on for another 12 months. 
have a plan for that and you just pull the lever when you hit those benchmarks which allows you so like that that's one strategy and the final thing i'd share nicole is like just build some faith that we're like again we're, we're in the united states right but we're going to get through this you'll adapt and you'll adjust and you'll get creative and you'll ask the right questions and you'll, you'll network and you'll watch this live and you'll be on your email list. You'll adapt and adjust as long as you are committed to being like six months from now, this is who I want to become. Yep. 12 months from now, this is who I want to become. And again, too many people were, me included, we create unnecessary stress by yeah. adding unnecessary meanings to what's going on. Well, one of my favorite things that you guys say is what do you want and why does it matter? And it's funny because as human beings, we overcomplicate everything, right? We think that the most profound things have to be complicated. And it really does come down to that. Like I remember even when we were in Shilmigan, you said, okay, that's great. So what do you want? And why does it matter? And it, she's like, no, 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 I need to ask you this whole question. Okay, yes, I, I, I heard your question, but what do you want? Like, why does that matter to you? And I use that on a daily basis where I tell people, I'm like, why does that matter? Because a lot of times we have in our minds, like this is what we want to do or this is what we want to be. And it's not really what we want. It's just what we think is the next step. And I feel like that's so powerful, especially with what you're saying, because we, if we have an idea of what we want to be with, in the next six months or what our plan is as, as business owners and entrepreneurs, the only thing that's going to keep us going is why it matters, right? Cause it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be hard, but like, what is it? You guys talk about your holy why, like, why is that so important to you that you get up at five, five thirty in the morning and it's a non-negotiable. Like, why is that so important? So I, I love what you guys do and I'm a huge advocate and huge fan. Um, and I, I just adore you and Nate and you guys are, are doing like amazing and, and I love your program. So I really appreciate you taking the time to even uh, come on and talk to us. Um, if somebody wants to follow you, how would the best way to connect with you? Yeah, go to my site, setemangali.com, S-E-T-E-M-A-G-A-L-I.com. You'll see my Instagram, my Facebook, get on my daily email list. You see my podcast, just reach out. Like we have a, a free challenge. It's normally a thousand bucks and we, we took it off the shelf. We put it into the marketplace and we like, it's free. And you go to champion three zero champion 30.com. It's our 30 day champions challenge. There's another way to just get like some really high level code with no investment financing, but just an investment in time and energy. We go to my site and Nicole, thank you. Like, I, I love, I love the message you're putting out. I love the positioning of your brand in the markets. I love who you are. And I just acknowledge you for all those who will watch this. Like you're, you're doing it. Like you're kicking butt and you're taking names and you're like preparing. I love the phrase, right? To be the first boat on the water when the storm calms and we can get back out. I know you'll be one of the first out on the water leading the pack. So thank you so much for having me. I'm grateful. I appreciate it. All right. Thank you guys. And um, definitely, you know, if you're not following Satema, go to his website. I'll post the link um, so you guys have it. Um, if anything, being able to, you know, listen to and consume the content that he's putting out there. I mean, it's so powerful. And we talk about how your perspective is everything. You want to be able to listen to his podcast and the things that they're doing. And the fact that they're, you know, letting you guys have this for free, just as you have all the time in the world now to be able to um, put that into action. So thank you again, Tema, and see you guys next time. Thanks, Nicole.